Ah, mixing. Isn't it the best? Well, <clears throat> if you're me, then it's, it's not the best. I don't actually love mixing that much. I admire it and I appreciate it. And sometimes I really enjoy learning how to do things faster and uh, better, but I don't necessarily love just mixing. For me, it's the big picture, the art of writing, capturing it, getting a good mix and then putting it out. That's, it's the whole thing. But today is pretty cool because I get to introduce you to a good friend of mine, longtime friend, Brendan Decora, who is a very successful audio recording, mixing engineer, Grammy winning an engineer, worked on just an insane amount of amazing records over the past 15, 20, maybe, maybe 20 years. Uh, he's been going for a while. I was recently out in LA and I got to stop by Brendan's home studio, which he's got a cozy, proper home studio in Santa Monica, just blocks from the beach. It's amazing. We actually did a podcast. He has a podcast that he runs called Pro Audio Profiles, and I'll put a link to that down in the description. He was kind enough to have me on as a guest, and while I was there, I wanted to pick his brain on some efficient mixing tips because he does a lot of mixing for clients and he does it remote in his home studio and he has a really unique setup and workflow for how he does that. So I hope you guys are ready for this. Get your notepads out because there's a lot of very valuable things that you're going to want to remember, especially if you're Pro Tools users, but if not, it'll still translate. But first thing, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. Second thing, go follow Brendan's podcast. Go follow him if you want. I'll put his links again down in the description. Go follow the podcast. If you're watching this video, then our episode just went up. It's a really, really good podcast and he has a lot of great guests on. You're gonna like it if you like recording studio stuff and you like hearing from professionals in the industry. That's the entire podcast. And uh, yeah, that's it. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this stuff down below. I'll see if I can get Brendan to reply to some of them. And uh, yeah. All right, today I'm here with my friend, Brendan Decora. He's a incredible Grammy winning audio engineer, but also old friend of mine. And uh, we're at his home studio. Okay, so first off, take it in, drink it in. Big Focal Trios, <laughs> my fave. S1 down here. Um, you got the Heritage Audio monitor level. Rupert Neve, Focal headphones. I'm just blasting through it. Symphony IO. You got the uh, Rupert Neve design summing mixers. And then you've had these for a minute, right? I've had those for a long time. The Millennia Prees, these are nice and clean. All right, so what are you using this room for? And what, what kind of work are you doing here? I'm doing only mixing here. Okay. Um, it's not really set up for tracking at all. I do probably 70% of my work here. I've refined it to be for mixing. Obviously, Oops. I've got the S1s. I've got the summing mixers. I've got, you know, the speakers. I have a sub down there, too. Oh, nice. So, and I like, as you know, you use these, too, but I really like the foot switch thing where you can oh, yeah. bypass. The, Focus mode. Yes. You can bypass the woofers, so they're like small speakers, you know. Yeah, that's that's got to work really nice in here, too, because yeah. this is, like, right at your shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's so nice. it, it actually saves me from having multiple sets of speakers. So yeah. So it's like these are multiple sets all in one, especially with the sub, too, I turn the sub on and off. It's like my main sort of thing. So, so this is, cool. for those who don't know, these are the Focal Trio 6s. Mm -hmm. It's a three-way speaker with a foot switch where you can basically turn off this cabinet. And these are actually separate cabinets. So they're both individually ported. So this, when you turn off the sub cabinet, this whole speaker just turns off, which it's normally ported down here. And you're just using this woofer and this tweeter. And it's dual port here. And you can also rotate these. Yeah. So you which can lay them down sideways. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Great speakers. Very expensive. <laughs> so one thing that really I started doing just out of annoyance more than anything else is mm -hmm. I'm running my symphony with Dante. Okay. Because I've got so much stuff going on the Thunderbolt bus that it was just better to run at Dante. Okay. And with Dante, I have to manually switch the sample rates for everything I do. Oh, okay. So it's a little annoying. Um, so I created a little script. I use Keyboard Maestro 
and you, it's like a, another software you can automate anything on your Mac. Basically, you can automate button clicks on your mouse, anything. Wow. Um, keyboard Maestro. Yeah. Okay. Keyboard Maestro. It's been around a long time. It's kind of, you know, there's other things now that do similar stuff, but this one. Mm -hmm. Is cool because you can actually say, I want to click here and drag this and move this around, and it will automate all that. Whoa. So it's really interesting. And this, in order to change sample rates on the Dante software, is like a bunch of button clicks. So I have to change the sample rate on the computer itself, yeah, and then also on the interface. So it's it's just annoying. So I programmed a little thing here where I can hit a quick key and it will manually go and change the sample rate for me. So I don't have to sit here and hit seven, you know, yeah. button clicks basically, and because I'm doing sessions where it's like, okay, this one's forty four one, this one's forty eight, this one's forty eighty eight two, yeah, opening and closing all the time. So it's just a little trick that I've used. Obviously, I'd use it in Pro Tools too when I'm doing massive editing or whatever. I can you can say, okay, do this these commands and then repeat it thirty times, Whoa. so I can. You know, do a, a bunch of drum editing or whatever. You know, chop up really? a bunch of stuff. It's it's really powerful. Yeah. Really. So you've used it on like Beat Detective before or something like that. Well, I use it. Um, or like manual editing. For manual editing. Oh, yeah. Okay. If I'm like chopping up samples or yeah. that kind of thing, where you know. Tab to transient. Tab to select, transient. Move. Select. Highlight. Select. Make a fade. Cut, do this yeah. one consolidate it and then repeat the whole process like uh, 40 times so i just yeah. have to sit here and watch it do its whole thing and turn out the whole thing it's crazy Whoa. <laughs> that's so cool there is another one i use called soundflow which is a newer one it's also very cool um where it's actually geared more towards pro tools where you can you know say okay i want to i actually use it a lot for uh just splitting stereo tracks you know if i have if i receive a file that's on a stereo track mm -hmm. and it's really a mono file yeah i can highlight all of them and instead of like okay split to mono now i need to select one and delete, delete it, it and yeah. pan up the middle and add to the group whatever rename it will i can just highlight all the tracks hit a quick key splits them all deletes it does the whole thing mm. And the same with the opposite, where I've, I have all mono tracks and I want to create stereo tracks out of them. There's another script for that. There's, you know, it's really powerful. You can I have a script for RX where I can do, you know, deplosive, you know, highlight a bunch of tracks, hit a button, it'll open the audio suite, set the settings, render the whole thing, you know, do a new playlist if you want. It it does it all. So oh my god, it's See, crazy. Can you make a video course on this? <laughs> charge 50 bucks show me yeah. how to do it yeah there's even uh, Andrew Sheps has a bounce factory thing in here where he's created a whole another thing within this that yeah. you can you know basically print all your stems, stems. for the whole album yeah and you can save uh, basically snapshots of your session and create the whole thing and it'll just do it while you sleep you know it's crazy yeah i've, I've been seeing more and more yeah my buddy marcus was doing that and then mm -hmm. this engineer jeff braun who's doing yeah. atmos exporting yeah. he goes thank you andrew chef yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's no, so, so there's crazy. but there's like i don't even use that very much i just use some of the basic things and it's even that alone is a lifesaver you know because i'll get we used to have assistance for that Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We used to be those assistants yes. doing that. For now, it's just hit a button and watch it do its thing. And it's all good. <laughs> so, that's hilarious. Anyway, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so keyboard maestro. Can you like save, like when you program all that, can you like save that as a thing and like hand it off to someone else and they could use it? Yeah. And that would I believe so. Theoretically, yeah. would work. This keyboard maestro is, it kind of looks like this it's a little older obviously um but i have you can do separate folders like i've got a bunch of bunch of them for pro tools in here where i can edit oh, all my cool. samples like this one i've you know enter in the the length of the sample that i want and then it will you know chop it and edit it and then delete the in-betweens and then do the exact length of you know so i can create oh samples gosh. the whole thing and it's repeated 20 times, so I can just hit one thing. Um, That's intense. Yeah, and you can do it for any software on the computer, like anything. 
you know, like I did all these for Dante, where I just, you know, this is move this mouse to this point on the screen and click and then drag it here and then move, click this button yeah. and do all that. And you can just record the thing and then it will do what uh, you want. And yeah, it, it'll map it all out. Maps it all out. Yeah, it's crazy. Whoa. So. Dang. Future yeah. video coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. And man. I do, honestly, I do that and a combination of, you know, my mixing templates. Um, mm -hmm. But my mixing templates are honestly, honest, like I'm kind of lazy with it where mm -hmm. I just have, like there's, you know, I, I find myself going for the same effects over and over again. Sure. So like, okay, let me add this reverb. Let me add this delay. Let me add this thing. And I've done that so much that now my mixing template is huge. Yeah. But I never use this, you know, all of it on one song. Of sure. Course, so. It's there and available. Yeah. Yeah. And then I do that in a combination with track presets and Pro Tools, where I have, you know, my, my drum presets, but it's easier to make as a track preset because I'm importing new tracks for every session half the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, I can just have all my plugins and my routing and everything for this track, load the preset, and then go from there. So I used yeah. to, the way that I would do that is just import session data from like, oh, that's right. how I use it on here. We'll just pull that data in. I'll tweak it. Right. But you can actually save a track preset now in Pro yes. Tools? Yes. Where you can save Snap. all of your settings, all the plugins, automation even. You can select which things are saved or not. Um, it's really powerful. So how do you how do you like the, uh, the S1 here? I love it, honestly. I got it because, you know, Avid kind of has a lock on the market with Yukon and the Yukon software in that it's the only the only controller where I can click a track on Pro Tools and it will snap that track to the to the highlighted one on the fader. You know, every other fader platform I have to go bank by bank and find the track that I want to adjust, basically. Mm. And so it's not it's way slower. You know, yeah. I can easily do that. Let me just open a session here and I can show you more stuff. And I was trying to think through, like, when I have the SSLU of eight, and it's like, mm -hmm. when I click that, it does it, but it doesn't It doesn't toggle over to it. It just shows, you, you, when you toggle through, you can see, where, see which track which is, is selected. Which is highlighted, yeah. yeah. So you still have to yeah, yeah, yeah. toggle Jump over. through there, yeah. yeah. This, which is kind of fun, because all the fader like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you can do that here too, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you can have a setting where anything you click on Pro Tools, it will snap, so yeah. that will fader is easily. Accessible. This is this is a cool setup where it's like you have your main monitor, and then these are tilted. Like, cause mm -hmm. I actually dislike this setup in every arrangement I've seen it, but this yeah. is the, kind of the coolest because you get like a almost like an extended monitor right for. Yeah. your controller absolutely and i've seen a lot of people not use these like these are just ipads on here you yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah so i've seen a lot of people have this setup where they don't they're not using the ipads at all yeah and honestly i that's the most powerful thing for me because the ipad with when it's on meter view like this it will light up so bright that even if like if you have a track that's already in the view and then you click on it it will just it won't snap it to the first one it'll just highlight it over here okay and so yeah, yeah. but it, with the ipads it it creates such a big outline that it's really easy to see where this is like this tiny little light on here yeah it's hard to see yeah, 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 yeah. so it's that together is is awesome you know often what i'll do wait can i point something out first yeah um, okay, so you just pulled up a session here. Mm -hmm. Right at the top, you've got all these auxes, and uh, here's the first thing I noticed. I noticed they're all black, which is the <laughs> no color option. Yeah. I do the exact same thing with my, with I call them like my sub mixes, right? Auxes. Yeah. And I always put them at the top of the yes. session. My master. You probably my got that bus. for me. Ma yeah, maybe. <laughs> there's there's just something about like, you know. The audio tracks, when I mix, which I, I, I don't even really like mixing, but mm. when I do, the easiest and most like straightforward, simple way for me is you get like a balance on your audio tracks to your submix. Right. And when you're like really doing the mixing, you're mm. we're just working with submixes. Mm -hmm. You're not like, oh, let me ride the snare bottom. You know what I mean? Like right. It's, exactly. It is exactly. what it is. 
So that's cool to yeah. see the similar things. I mean, the color thing, I'm just lazy. And <laughs> I have, often I'll have my default color scheme set to groups. Okay. So that when I create groups, it will it will show. Like even now, like, oh, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I suspend groups, it'll turn on and off. So I yeah, know yeah. when the groups are on. So that way I don't have to think about the color coding and spending all this extra time labeling stuff and all that. It's mm -hmm. just, okay, to the groups. If it's not a group, it's gray. Okay. You know, whatever, no big deal. And I've actually started using these track folder things a lot too because it's, it's basically, I use them as auxes, but it's yeah. a folder so I can easily just close everything and make it all really tidy and neat. And then yep. have each one on a fader on here and it's great. You know, it makes it very, very easy and efficient. So, mm. and I'll have, you know, with the track presets, like, for example, I can load all of these, like, so I have, like, a general kick drum, you know, thing. It's the same thing, where I found myself pulling up the same plugins every time. Sure. I was like, okay, let me save a preset for that, and I can go in here, and I save the preset, oh, and I can go, okay, I killer. want to name it, and then these are all the things, and I can select which things I'm saving. You know, you can really get powerful, like, okay... I want to save this preset, but I've done all this automation, so yeah. I don't want to save that because yeah. every time I load it, it's going to have all this automation that's not going to be relevant. So you can really fine tune. You can even save clips as part of it. You can load this as the actual audio. Um, but it's it's makes it easier than doing import session data yes. because it's always there. Yeah. You know? And yeah. same with when I load it. You know that way. I can pull up all these new files because a lot of people I'm working with aren't using Pro Tools. So I'll import the raw the audio, audio yeah. and then I'll have all these tracks like, okay, here's my drums, here's my, my kick drums, you know, I'll just load my preset onto that and then it's got all my general settings and then I can just refine the settings mm -hmm. and you know, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, so I can easily, you know, load you know, like often these guitars will be multi multi mic'd amps, you know. Yep. So, okay, I'll put them in a folder with the hotkey, you know, load, route the tracks to the new folder. So it automatically creates the name and yep. it'll name the bus and it'll route it to that bus. And then mm. I just go to this and I load my guitar bus preset on there. Boom. It's there, you know. Oh, so so it's already routed. Have my basic plugins, and in thirty Dang. seconds, I can be yeah. on my way. You Got know? your template there. Yeah, so it's that's killer, dude. Yeah, so it's not like I have all my guitar buses and drum buses in the session as the template. It's that I have a combination of all my effects and all my routing for my summing mixer, and then I use track presets for the rest. So that's it amazing. Makes it man. super fast. Heck yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you for showing me that. Of course. <laughs> uh, Brennan has a podcast. It's called Pro Audio Profiles. There you go. Thank uh, you. I was just a guest. We just did an episode here. So it's there's a YouTube channel for it. You can find it on all the podcast all places. All the things, yeah. And, Pro um, Profiles .com is where you find the whole everything. And uh, yeah, you've got an Instagram too. Mm -hmm. I'll put links to all that stuff down in the description so people can follow you and uh, send you all their annoying questions. <laughs> become friends with you. It'll be great. Perfect. Thank awesome. You. Thank you, man. Thank you so much.